So the question is, Mary, did you know? And the answer is, no. She had no idea. Here's Mary, just being Mary. How, how, how little we really know about her. Oh, there's all kinds of stories and all kinds of ideas of what people have made. But if we just look at the scripture, we just know Mary, her virgin. That's it. A descendant of David, she's going to be married to a descendant of David, Joseph, and a virgin named Mary. That's what we get. And yet, when, as Naomi sang that song, and I just, I guess that came out of probably just a few years ago, all of a sudden it starts, it's, it's like a unfolding, unfolding, unfolding. Mary, did you know when this angel came to you that all this was coming on? Not a clue. No idea. You know, I often think, how come somebody couldn't have figured that out? If they put all the, we, could, we look at the prophetic words and it seems like here it is. It wasn't like, Mary, you're the one. Just hang out long enough and something's going to happen. It didn't happen that way. Let me just read this to you. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are going to give his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How can this be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me, even as you have said. And then... The angel left her favor with God. Opens the door for a miracle. Favor with God. Now just try to picture this. Mary is just as Phyllis and I pastored a little church up in Massachusetts and, and the ladies of the church couldn't leave it that way. They had to make a story. So they would tell the kids, they had, we had vacation Bible school, they had vacation Bible, but then they had Christmas school. So the kids were out of school. These women were tenacious. They were getting these kids into that church no matter what it took. And so they would tell the story of Mary making her wedding dress when the angel came. I thought, well, whatever, you know, here I am in theology 101, and they're telling me, yeah, we just tell them that she's making her wedding dress. I thought, you know what, if it works, it's okay with me. She could be doing whatever she wants. His favor... God's favorite. Think, now here she is, an angel comes to her. There's nobody else there. And says, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. I don't think she says anything. And this is what follows. Mary was troubled. Wonder what kind of greeting this might be. And so the angel answers again, don't be afraid. You have found favor with God. And you're going to have a child, and it's going to be a son. He's going to be called the Most High. Oh, that's really not helping me a lot, angel, right now at all. Thank you so much. I'm now overwhelmed. And yet she comes to this place, and her whole purpose, as the favor of God is declared over her life, is to now move in obedience. How can this be? I want to do exactly what's said. How can this be? For this is my state, but I know in God's favor, there's nothing impossible. And the angel goes on and explains something that to this day, none of us really understand. God's favor overshadows the person of Mary, overshadows everything she is. He blocks out, when God overshadows, when his, his favor is upon us, he blocks out our ability to see anything else but him. Not the favor of this world, not the favor of our friends, not the favor of our family, not the favor of ourselves, but the favor of God blocks out everything except his presence. 
And this is the part that I just love. His favor, as the angel expresses, overshadows all of our doubts, all of our concerns, all of our inabilities, all of our inadequacies. When Jesus hung on the cross and the favor of God was declared from that cross upon our lives as we accept him as Lord and Savior, that favor comes down and all of a sudden, the very person that I was, I'm not that person anymore because God's favor has come upon me. A sinner saved by grace, God's favor to prepare something that I was never even thought could ever happen in my life. And so for Mary, her declaration, yes, I'm a a virgin, what is going to happen? But I am the Lord's servant, may it be to me even as you have said. And Mary began to walk in God's favor. The miracle was still to unfold. It didn't make any more sense to her than it did before, but she knew one thing. God's favor causes me to have obedience. Favor is connected with the transformation that God wants to do in our lives. Favor is connected with the transformation that God wants to do in our lives. Favor is not just God liking us. You know, I, I hate to say it, but I think we've settled for that. We really have. Pastor Scott was causing us, you know, and just encouraging us in our time of worship. How many times have we we cheapened what favor is from God? God likes me. He's my friend. So in our friendship, he'll let me do what I want to do. I'll let him do what he has to do. And we'll make it work. But think about the angel Gabriel came from heaven with a message to Mary that says, you have been highly favored. The Lord is with you. When Jesus spoke from that cross, it is finished. He said, my favor is upon you as salvation is declared over your lives. It changes us. It has to change us. He's accepted us. The fullness of God's grace is upon us. We're we're freely given to open our heart, to believe and walk in obedience, and we are transformed. So favor holds us close to God's heart and obedience. And I sort of picture it this way. It's like God comes in and he says, I favor you, and my response is to grab hold of him and hold on to him. One of the greatest joys that you can have as a parent, and, and now I experience as a grandparent, is when my little Aiden comes running off the airplane because they're always coming or going somewhere on that airplane. He's got two and a half years old, 110 flights he's been on. Isn't that amazing? He comes off that plane, and I just can't wait to stand there. Bradley always goes, Dad, you can pick us up. We'll call you. Dad, I stand there. Oh, he runs, and he grabs hold of my legs. I can experience that here. What about what God wants? To embrace the very presence of God. God says, I favor you. Oh, I want to hold on to him. I want to hold on to his presence in every part of my life. Not just let it pass by as a nice tap on the head. Good boy, you're doing a great job. Keep going until you come to visit me in eternity. That's not the way it's about. The angel says, Mary, your whole life is going to change because my favor is upon you. We don't know anything about She didn't say, well, I did this, and I did this, and I memorized the scripture, and I remember, blah, 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 blah. God's favor is on you, and I'm going to do a miracle in your life. I'm signing up for that. God's favor poured down upon our heart. It's, it's about giving up everything when God's favor is in our life. It's about giving up everything when his grace is poured down into our hearts and life. We no longer insist on maintaining our individuality. It's not about that anymore. So many of us, God comes into our hearts and lives, we're overwhelmed and we're saying, oh, thank you, Lord, for all these things you've changed, all these things that I needed in my life. These things have been really okay. You don't have to do anything over here. This is really good. I'm kind of a good person. I've got some ideas. I've got some thoughts. I have some talents. I have some gifts. You can leave these alone. This is a little mess over here. If you could clean this up, that would be really good. You see, the fact is that when God comes into our lives and his favor comes down upon us, he now has to create a place for a miracle to happen. He has to create a miracle. And we no longer, I no longer can say, I just, I pray, oh God, this is so good, but please don't change anything in my life. I would like a miracle, but please don't change anything in my life. 
Just leave everything the same except just bring in a bigger paycheck. Just bring everything the same except tell the, have the doctor say everything's okay. Don't change anything. And yet that's exactly what happened in Mary's life. Everything changed. Everything changed. She went from being married that we don't know anything about it, ascended all these different things to be one who is favored from God. And here's the change. I am no longer just Mary sitting here. I am your servant. May it be to me even as you've said. And Mary's life changed forever. When God's favor is upon us, it's not until everything in the miracle happens. It's not like, okay, that was a lot. Let me go back to my routine now. Think about how simply we do that. For most of us, we think a miracle is getting a parking space at Macy's during the Christmas rush. You know, I had a miracle today. Car pulled out right as I pulled into Macy's. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, that's what we limit it to. I mean, think about it. It's not a miracle. That's just God's grace. We're walking through our life. God, every so often, he just, oh, they need a parking space. Give them a parking space. I don't know how that works. I pray for parking spaces all the time. Sometimes I'm parked at the second field. I don't know where I am. I must be in the wrong place. But her identity, see, her identity was not transformed with the intention of her going back to the way she was ever again. Ever again. And maybe that's the biggest challenge for us when God's favor from the cross comes down into our hearts and lives. We have to start realizing, I'm never going back to the way it was again. I'm never. I'm never going back to that place where I was angry and bitter. Never going back to that place where I was unforgiving to people. Never going back to that place where I lived in depression and despair my whole life. I'm not going back there. God's favor changes who I am. And a miracle that he's about to, that's about to happen in my life now has a place that he is preparing. He's preparing because, you see, the thing that happened in Mary's life is, is this, this beautiful unfolding. She says all of these things, that she is now going to be the servant. May it be to me as you said. And then listen to this. This is so powerful. And then the angel left her. Now, I don't know about you, but if I got this whole thing from the angel that I had no idea what it was, I'd be like, where are you going? Um, so you'll come every Monday and give me an update of what's going on. I'll get an email, voicemail, text me, I don't care, something. But you're not leaving. That would be me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where are you headed off to? But you see, what's happened is in those moments, God's favor transformed her life. Her life was so transformed that a miracle now could take place there. She didn't need an angel to walk her through every day. She was able to say, I don't know how this is going to work out. I don't know how I'm going to tell my parents. I don't know about Joseph. I don't know about angels and, and shepherds and magi and traveling pregnant. On a, I don't know anything about this, but here we go. I'm just going. I'm going because God's favorized me and he's changed the course and he's changed the direction of my life. And I think that's the question we really have to ask ourselves when we're ready for a miracle. Are we ready to be transformed by the presence of God in our lives? And some of us will say, yes, but... Yes, except... See, we want the miracle. We want the miracle to happen, but we're not ready for what has to happen for the miracle. How can I have a miracle of healing if I don't have cancer? How can I have a miracle of, of God's financial blessing if I don't lose my job? How am I going to have a miracle of God healing my marriage if my marriage isn't falling apart? Hello? Makes sense. But as soon as we get the doctor's report, oh, it's all over. God, where's God? He's not there. He's disappeared. It's, oh, it's a terrible thing. Can I be this Christian? Hey, God, I'm trying to do a miracle here. Hello? I do a miracle here. Stay with me a little bit. My favor is on you. But we see, we think it's God's favor is on you. Everything's going to be okay. It will. 33 years later, Mary saw what the miracle was, was the salvation of the world. 33 years for the miracle to happen and all the things that occurred in her life, watching her own son be nailed to a cross. 33 years it took for that miracle to really come to the fullness of what God intended it to be. But we want that miracle during halftime. We want it as soon as it can and happen. 
So, so the path of God's favor and the path towards the miracles. And, you know, I didn't share this at the first service, but I was in the uh, office there just praying. And I said, you know, what? it's an amazing thing how much is in this Christmas story. I read it. I start in December and I just read it over and over and over again because I have many opportunities to speak at different luncheons and things during this time. And I thought to myself, isn't it amazing? The way that God carved out a space for Jesus that nobody, I would have never put him in a manger. I would have never put him there. I would have put him, I don't know, where do you put the Son of God? Maybe a suite at the Hilton. I don't know what, what you choose. But that had to be made ready. Didn't seem like there was much favor on Mary and Joseph except for maybe the heart of an innkeeper that we know nothing about except that he was an innkeeper and there was no room. And somehow they found their way to this, this, this manger and there was a preparing in a dark, smelly, messy place for a miracle. See, I, I'm like, you. I don't want the dark, messy place. I'll just take the miracle, please. I don't want the work that God has to do in my life to prepare for the miracle. I'll just take the miracle, please. I don't want the negative to see the good thing. I just, I just want the, just the miracle, please. There's not a woman here that has had a child that can say to me, oh, at the very end, it's really wonderful. That's the best part at the end. All the rest of the time, your back hurts, your ankles swell, you're eating things you never eat in life. And, but when it finally comes time to the contractions, oh, that's the best part. I would do that alone. Listen, I have my wife grabbing me. I, know what, I don't know what was going on there, but I know I'm not out of that room, let me tell you right now. But the fact is, is right when the miracle is ready to happen is when it's the worst that it could possibly be. When the pain is the worst, when the disappointment is the worst. When the, because why? Because God's saying, I need my favor to be transformational in your life right now. I need everything to be made ready because when this miracle happens, your life will change forever. Your testimony will change forever. Your witness will change forever. Your attitudes will change forever. Your values will change forever. That's the way a miracle happens. It changes the course of our lives. Mary's life was changed. Our life was changed by the miracle of salvation. But like Mary, we have to just step into that place and do it. Or Joseph, to step into that place and do it. Like the shepherds who get announced from an angel. Those of you who have seen the show, we have this angel. My goodness, I've never seen an angel so big in my life. I'm having nightmares, I mean dreams about this night. I thought, and that's one of, the, one of the men from our congregation. Oh my goodness, it's incredible. I would be like the shepherds, fearful. Fear, I was fearful, I was sitting all the way over there. So the, what's the path of God's favor? You know, Paul sums it up. He sums up something that to me maybe makes us understand a little bit more how God's favor prepares the way for a miracle in our life. But it's not the way we think. From uh, 2 Corinthians 6, Paul says these, as God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. And so here's, here's how it comes down from Paul. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path, so our ministry will not be discredited. See, God's favor requires us to live differently. That's what Paul's saying. God's favor is in our life. We have to make some choices here. God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, has spoken favor and grace into my life through the cross. For Mary, it was the word brought by the angel. And so here is what Paul says. Rather, as servants of God, I am the Lord's servant, may it be to me even as you've said. We commend ourselves in every way. We commend ourselves in every way. We choose to live out his favor in great endurance in troubles, in hardships, in distresses, in beatings, imprisonments, riots, in hard work, sleepless nights and hunger, in purity and understanding and patience and kindness, in the Holy Spirit and in sincere love and truthful speech and in the power of God. 
with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through the glory and dishonor, through bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet ma making many rich, having nothing and yet possessing everything. We make our purpose to get out of the way to let the miracle happen. I think we're in the way sometimes. We're in the way. We have our fears, we have anxieties, and, and let's face it, we have our, our disobedience. We want a miracle on our terms. We want a miracle when we want it, when it's convenient for us. The favor of God is the presence of God. And the presence of God is what we embrace to go through every single part of our life, not just when the doctor says it's cancer, but every moment of every day. And that's how we feel and sense and know God's favor in every area of our life. And so we, we look at you know, the change that took place in Mary. See, here's the neat thing. When we become a believer in Jesus Christ, when we become Christians, and, and, we, and this whole thing has trans, transformed us, like all that's happening at the altars here, and everything starts changing in our life, now God has something that, that he can enter into. But all too often, we're already done. And then we're frustrated because the miracle doesn't come when I pray that prayer. And yet we're living lives that are doing anything but reflecting the favor of God. We're living lives that are doing anything but reflecting the favor of God, the transforming life that he wants us to live. You know, when Jesus healed the blind man, that man was blind from birth. But the miracle was that he was, his, eyes, his sight was restored at the right time by Jesus. His family didn't say, one day, the Messiah will come and heal him. But he walked his whole life blind. And everybody knew he was blind. And then Jesus, you would think it would be so easy if he would have just said, see in, in my name. No, he has to make mud, to spit into the mud. That's disgusting. Spit into the mud. Make a pack. I mean, I don't care if it's Jesus spit or not. I mean, let's be honest. It's spit is spit. It's spit and mud is mud is mud. And, and he, now he puts it on the man's eyes. He puts it on his eyes and he says, now, 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 he's blind from birth. He puts mud on his eyes and now he says, go walk. So, I mean, he knew how to walk without, with mud on his eyes because he hasn't seen his own. Now he goes down to the, I'm thinking, am I, I'm reading this going, could we like speed it up? He goes down to the river. Everybody, think about this. The whole town is watching this. He goes down to the water. He washes his eyes off. He comes back. He can see. Everybody's rejoicing except the Pharisees. They want, well, who did this? Who did this? Who did this? The guy can see. Can we skip over the who did it part? He can see. And he goes, you know what? I don't care. I was blind, but now I see. It's all that matters to me. For us, we were blind, but now we see. Because of God's favor in our, in our lives, our eyes are open spiritually to the things that God wants to continue to do in our lives. And the miracle comes. The miracles come when this vessel is ready. When he's taken out the bitterness and he's taken out the unforgiveness and the disappointment and all the things that we carry with us all the time. What makes us a candidate for God's favor and the release of the miracle within desiring God's presence in every area of our life? Desiring God's presence in every area of our life. Not some on this side, not some on this side. Every area of our life. God's presence. I need your presence in my marriage. I need your presence in my finances, in, in my dealings, in my job, as a boss, as a worker. I need it as I deal with people all day long. Lord, I need your presence. That's what I need, your presence. And that, what that does is say, I'm holding on to you, God. And as your favor pours into me, now I'm ready for the miracle. Now I'm ready to speak life into a situation that I could never do before because your presence has transformed me. And now I'm a vessel carrying a miracle to an unsafe person that can come to know you as a Lord and Savior of their life. I'm a vessel ready to birth forth a miracle because you have prepared me and I have moved in the favor of God. That's what changes us. That's what changes the course and the direction. Our daily 
Daily leaving the values of this world behind. Daily leaving the things of this world behind and living out the favor of God in our lives. Maybe there's a few ways that can be done. When was the last time you played the I don't have enough time to read the Bible game? When was the last time you switched off the Christian station in your car and switched on the worldly music? Oh, Pastor Ted, you look like you're 90 years old. It's hey. When Mary was touched by the angel, do you think she just went, well, okay, some bad matzo balls. I'm going back to what I was doing before. It's changed. When Jesus came into your heart and life, from that moment, from that moment, his favor has been on you to prepare you for the miracles that he wants to bring. And I really believe in our church, God wants to do miracles, but we're, we're not ready. We're not ready. We just want to be entertained by the miracles. Jesus on the cross was not entertainment. The miracles that God wants to do in your hearts and your lives, restoring your family, restoring your finances are about so much more. Could you imagine if God does the miracle and restores your marriage and you don't say anything? I love the fact that we have people in our church that are working on teams here that sat in my office and said, never going to happen. And truly, as they found God's favor and his strength and held on in obedience to the Lord and held on to his presence, they are now counseling other couples to have their marriages restored. That's how God works. Mary's life was changed forever. Your life is changed forever when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So, so let's look at it this way. The miracles that God wants to bring are miracles that are going to come when you are prepared to see those miracles happen. Can I encourage you that over the course of these next few days and few weeks, just say, God, do I really understand your favor on my life? Do I really understand it? And maybe during the course of the day, you're going to get that little nudge by the Holy Spirit that says, see, this needs to change. Not just maybe about three weeks ago, I was sharing with Pastor Rich something. And as I was speaking to him, and it was a situation not worth going involved with, and, I, and, he, and he was saying to me, oh, you're you know, just doing such a great job here. And the Holy Spirit was saying, but your heart is not right. He was saying to me, everything on the outside looks good. Finally, I said to him, you know, Pastor Rich, you have to stop. Uh, we need to pray. I said, because while you're talking, the Holy Spirit is saying to me, your heart's not right. You're doing good stuff, but not from a heart that has been made right with me. You see, that's how deep it goes when God's favor comes upon us. His favor causes transformation so that we are ready to give forth and receive the miracle that he has for us. I'm on that plan. That's the plan I want. That's the plan God wants. That's the plan he wants for this church. Because I do believe that his heart is not to entertain us with miracles, but to transform even our church. Transform us so that the miracles can be released as only he can do that. Would you stand with me? And we're going to pray. And this is what I'm asking. I'm just going to ask, be open right now to what God wants in your life. Maybe it's the first time you ever thought about it. God's favor on me? Yeah. His favor came from the cross. Salvation in him and him alone. And now what's the miracle? What are the things that God wants to do through you as you are broken and transformed? So Lord, here we are in this place today. And we believe that the work that you desire to do in our lives is overwhelming for us. Just like Mary, sitting in that place, wherever she was, and an angel making a declaration that she couldn't even begin to grasp hold of. And I pray that you will move us as you did Mary, with truths and visions beyond our comprehension I really believe that, Lord. You want to cause us to see beyond what we can hold on to. 
because your presence is so much more than just a feeling or an emotion. And forgive us when we've, we've limited it to that. Your presence transforming our lives because of your favor. That the miracle of salvation, the miracle of life would be birthed in us. As we're praying, I just... There is someone here, I believe it's a man, and, and you just came here today, and you're just so hopeless. You're just hoping maybe something today, something would help you just get through these next few weeks because you just, you just don't even want to be here. I tell you, the Lord brought you here today, and he wants you to know his favor is on you. Don't be afraid. You've run from him for so long. But his favor is on you. And he wants your life to be transformed. You fought him. I, I don't know, I just feel I need to say this. I just feel like the Lord's showing me that you, took, you actually took the Bible and threw it across the room. She said, you can't believe it. I'm telling you, God loves you. And we're working, Lord. We're desiring to do all that we can. But we are overwhelmed by your love and your presence. And Lord, we believe that in all of our lives, a miracle, Lord, just the miracle of our salvation is overwhelming enough. But now, Lord, we might be an avenue of miracles as we speak that word of truth into people's hearts and lives. The moving of your spirit your presence, Lord, that sets us free from the things of this world. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. As we sing this, could you just say, Lord, I don't even know how to put this all together, but I know one thing. There's just something about you and you alone. And would you just let the presence of God saturate you now? Amen. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name, oh, Master, say. Let all heaven 
right now I, I don't know what's happening in your lives only the Lord does maybe you're here for the first time maybe you came to one of the presentations and you just found out and we're, and we're so glad that you're here with us today but I wonder if you would just stop and maybe we just all need a starting point when I do think I like a starting point where, where am I starting God's favor came from the cross for you and for me and the miracle of salvation is, is placed within our hearts and our lives. But I think we all need to, every so often, get back to that place like Mary did, where she simply said, I'm the Lord's servant. May it be to me even as you've said. And whatever happens from there, whatever happened in Mary's life, is awesome. It's awesome. It doesn't always feel comfortable, but it's awesome. I can look back over my Christian life and say, oh God, how you've loved and cared for us. How you've watched over us. Two children that we never should have had. One travels with the Watoto Children's Choir, a Christian group traveling throughout the world. A miracle? Yeah. A miracle that we'd want to hold on to? No more. Who knows? But it starts here. I am the Lord's servant. I'm going to read these words. I'm not asking you to say them out loud, but would you say them in your heart of hearts? I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me even as you have said. Lord, you hear our hearts right now in this place. We honestly don't know the fullness of what we've just said except this. We love you. We want to serve you. And your favor over our life has transformed us. Now, may we walk in all that you have for us. And I pray the blessing of the Lord upon you as you have been faithful to him so he truly has touched your hearts and lives. May you be transformed, changed, and set free from the things of the past as the miracle that God has in your life unfolds daily. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and just continue to pray for all of the presentations today that these altars would be filled with many who come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives. God bless you.